Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the SFML video series. So last time, if you recall, we were talking about events. And in fact, let's go ahead and just dive into the documentation so we can have a reminder here. And you can go ahead and read the event details here talking about basically how the event system works. And I've described it a little bit in previous videos if you've been watching along. But the basic idea is, well, one event happens and we handle it one at a time by sort of pulling for that event, detecting what its type was, and then doing the appropriate thing based off of if it was a mouse click, a keyboard press, or some other system event. Now, what happens if you wanted to do two things at once, such as detect a mouse click and a key press? This sort of poses a little bit of a problem, and we're going to want to fix that, because if you're playing a game, often times you'd expect to be able to hold down a key and be able to click with the mouse, for instance, or perhaps any other type of multimedia application. So with that, SML provides static member functions, that is, functions related to the mouse and the keyboard that can be called. So let's go ahead and look at those first by trying to find them in the documentation. So I'm going to look at the classes and then I'm going to find, let's do a search for mouse here, just to start with mouse. And we'll do the same for keyboard uh, later. But the basic idea is if we look at our static public member functions, these are functions that can be called everywhere. We don't have to wait to handle a specific event that has happened. So we have is button pressed here and then we can detect what the actual button is. So I'll open that up in a new window here. And we'll just check SF, mouse, button, left, right, middle, or perhaps any other buttons uh, that you might have on your mouse. So with that said, let's go ahead and see in a new sample if we can put this to use here. So again, outside of our uh, event handling, what I'm going to do is use this static member function. Again, it's a static member function of the mouse class, meaning I can call it anywhere because it's uh, shared amongst all of our mice here. So what I'm going to do is just say if SF mouse button left, well, that's the particular button that I want to detect. But again, how did I get here or how am I detecting this? Well, here's a sneak peek is button pressed, but let me go ahead and show you from the documentation. So is uh, button pressed. And again, that's part of the SF uh, mouse class here. So let me go ahead and type this out here. So SF mouse and is button pressed and one parameter the left mouse button here so i'll just go ahead and put a little end line here and say mouse button pressed and let's be a little bit more specific here because this is the left mouse button so left mouse button is pressed and i'll put an end line here just to make things uh nice all right, now let's go ahead and give this a test just to prove that it works. So I'll go ahead and compile this. So let me go ahead and compile. And oops, looks like I've made a little mistake here. And I just have a little spelling mistake. So I'll go ahead and fix that here. I'm sure you folks caught that before I did. And it looks like we can run here. So now if I left click, you'll notice that well, I got a lot of events here. I'll hold it up to my uh, microphone so you can see my uh, mouse click here uh, in my camera. And it looks like there were tons of events ha that happened. So maybe is mouse uh, pressed is probably something we have to be a little bit careful with. Meaning, well, before we were handling events, we could do something like with our keyboard and just see if the mouse was released or something of that matter. So we have is button pressed, but how would we detect if a mouse was released? And you might say, Mike, this is really weird. I know you didn't press the mouse button so many times. Uh, and let me fix the uh, spelling mistake here. Um, so the basic idea here is if I just click once, it's going to run many, many times here because one click actually, well, if our program is running, say, at hundreds of frames per second and the mouse is held down for, uh, say, even 100 milliseconds, we're going to get 100 different uh, mouse clicks. So this is where we have to think about, OK, what do we truly want to do here? So how can I refactor this so I could always detect that the mouse is being pressed and handle that as some uh, special instance in my game or application? Well, the truth is you're going to have to use a combination of these two systems here. So for example, I might want to have a specific event type here where I'm detecting if the mouse was released and then maybe change some Boolean flag here to determine 
on the off chance that the mouse was released or it was clicked and then use that in combination with is button press. So let me go ahead and hack something together to essentially show you how I can change this to a um, function that we can call anywhere in our program, but only detect that event once. So I have to use it in combination here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a Boolean variable and I'll say mouse was released um, equals, uh, I'm going to make it false by default. And we'll have a event type here. If event type equals SF event mouse button released, then we will change this flag here. So uh, mouse was released equals true. And by default, every time we come into this event loop, though, I just want to make sure that mouse released is false. And then in my uh, code elsewhere, so outside of my event loop, I can then use this flag and say, and mouse was released. OK, so let's go ahead and see what happens here. We've essentially just created this uh, additional Boolean and used our event loop so that this way will only be clicking one time. Uh, this is a problem I've seen other folks struggle with, so let me go ahead and compile it, run it, and I'll just, uh, now I'm holding down my mouse button, uh, I'll bring it up to the uh, camera so you can see, and just clicking once at a time, and even if I hold the mouse down, uh, you'll see that there's only one event captured. So depending on how you want to use the systems, you might have to build some abstractions uh, on top of them if you like. Okay, now that's the sort of mouse use case. And again, if your intent is to always have the mouse down and then uh, have some event happens, well then just get rid of this mouse was released. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the SF keyboard to see what other static uh, member functions that that might have, and then we will wrap up the lesson. Okay, so I'm just going to do a search here again, uh, or here's keyboard if I can just find it. Um, and we have again the same public member functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat. I'm going to do is SF uh, keyboard is key pressed, and then we need a key here. And we'll go ahead and look for a specific key. Uh, and we have the A key here. So this is going to be the full enumeration and A. Uh, so let's go ahead and just handle this again. See out. Um, a key was pressed. And then the actual condition here, keyboard, key, A. Okay, and then I'll recompile the program. I'll rerun it, and you'll hear me in a moment just press the A key. And again, I just tapped it really quick, but we'd need to use a similar strategy, just like our mouse, to sort of detect if this uh, was a release event or not. So my hunch is SFML just didn't provide a is key press uh, or an is key release rather function because they wanted to leave it up to you for handling this. That way you can detect in any functions outside of the event loop and so on, uh, button press, button released in these types of events. They're not too hard to implement as we've done. You just need some Boolean somewhere else in your project. All right, folks, so I hope that was useful. I hope that gives you more insight into, again, handling keyboard events, uh, mouse events, and just other types of events. And you can sort of scroll through the documentation, look through the touch events joystick if you need those, and see what other static member variables uh, or member uh, functions, rather, are available for you. All right, so if you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a like uh, and subscribe so that you're ready for the next video, and we'll see you then.